One assumption that I've heard online time and time again is the idea that Macs are more secure than Windows PCs. But is that actually true or is it just another myth? My name is Ryan from Elevate Cyber and I'm an offensive security professional with over eight years experience of breaking into hardened systems and networks of some of the world's largest organizations, including the US government. And in this video, I'm going to be hacking into both Windows and Mac computers in the effort to finally put this debate to rest. But really quick, before we get into it, there is a trend that I've noticed in cybersecurity as someone that is an insider that I wanted to share with you guys. These CISOs recently have come out saying like, yes, we do need to fill a lot of positions in cybersecurity. We have a lot of vacancy, but we're not looking for entry level people. And this is a bit unfortunate for a lot of you guys out there because you're looking to land that first job and you're trying really hard and you are developing a lot of skills. It is harder than when I first got in. What it really means is that we need to elevate our skill set, hence the name Elevate Cyber, right? We need to elevate our skill set above the entry level in order to get into this field now. It's going to take a little bit more than it did back in the day. So needless to say, you do need a mentor. You absolutely need a mentor if you want to get into cybersecurity in 2023 and beyond. Now, whether you go with a paid mentor or a free mentor, that's completely up to you, but you do need a mentor. One thing that I will say on that though, is that if you go with a paid mentor, they're going to be a lot more invested in your success, right? Like with these free mentors, you can totally go for that. You know, there's different discords and stuff you can join. But the thing is, usually these people have a ton of people that they're also mentoring and it's just something they kind of do on the side. They don't really do it in an as serious of a capacity. And if you think about, uh, if you ever heard of Dunbar's law in the uh, psychology realm, right? It's it basically a law that says we can only have a working relationship with, I think about a hundred people or hundred something people at one time. Well, they have like at least a hundred people just hitting them up for advice on, uh, on discord and stuff like that, let alone all the family and friends that they have in their personal life. So chances are they're not even going to really remember where you're at or have any kind of relationship beyond just giving you like kind of surface level advice. So that is one thing that I would consider on that. If you want to go more in depth with your mentorship and really position yourself to get in this field in this tough landscape, send me a DM to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber and we'll go from there. All right, now with that out of the way, let's jump into this topic here today. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, I have a few machines here. I have Kali Linux, which is gonna be our attacking server. I got a Windows machine, I got a Mac as well, which is my own personal Mac here. So the very first thing we're gonna do, this is a pretty entry level exercise that I give to my students is we're gonna do a reverse shell. We're gonna hack into our Mac, we're gonna hack into our Windows PC here and uh, actually learn what it means to, to hack into something. So we're gonna get what's called a reverse shell. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our Netcat listener. And then since we're gonna be working with Mac first, I'm gonna show you just how simple it is to get a reverse shell on Mac. So we're gonna simply run this command here that honestly, you don't have to memorize it or anything. You can literally just copy and paste this command right here. This is using a technique called name pipes to give us a reverse shell. So I'm gonna press enter on my Mac. So this would simulate like if someone had access to your computer in some way, maybe it's through some vulnerable software, maybe they have physical access, you went to the bathroom, didn't lock your PC. Um, it could be any number of ways. Maybe it's through a malicious Microsoft Word document, right? So I'm gonna press enter on this and then we jump over here. We see we now have a reverse shell. And so I can run commands like, who am I? I can browse the PC as if I had physical access to it. Uh, I have hacked in effectively to the Mac. Now, one thing that you'll notice is in this entire process, at no point was antivirus ever triggered. At no point was there any barrier whatsoever in our way to stop us from doing this. Like it just worked. There was no problem at all. Now let's go ahead and exit out of this. Let's try to do the same thing on our Windows target. So we're gonna use an equivalent technique. We're gonna use PowerShell instead of Bash, right? Because we're on a Windows system. We don't have Bash, we have PowerShell, right? So this is a couple step process. I'm gonna use something called Nishang, which I got from GitHub. You can search up uh, GitHub Nishang for this. So if I go into my Nishang folder, cause I clone the repository, I have that on my system, we can go into this folder here, Shang, Nichelle, uh, Nishang and Shells, and we're gonna see this invoke TCP one line dot PS1. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna copy this into some other folder. I'm gonna go to that folder and I'm going to make a quick edit to this. The edit that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncomment this line so the reverse shell will work. 
And then I'm going to replace this IP address with the IP address of my Kali Linux machine, which I can find from the IF config command here. That's the first step. So we do that and then we'll replace the port with 443 because that's what we're listening right above with uh, netcat. So we want to make sure the ports match up. So let's do this. And now we're going to host this using a Python web server. All right, couple step process here. Now we should be ready to get the reverse shell on Windows. So let's just try and do that. So in order to get the reverse shell on Windows, Again, let's assume that maybe we hacked some vulnerable software to get code execution. Maybe we delivered a malicious Word document. Maybe we just have physical access to the machine. Whatever the case may be, we're able to inject our own PowerShell commands. So let's try to inject the PowerShell command that will use this to help us obtain a reverse shell. So paste this one in. Copy, paste. This is my payload here. Try to run it and we'll see what happens. And, uh-oh, we got the red text. What happened here? Well, it appears that uh, we were stopped by something called AMSI. Now, you see, <laughs> the way that Windows works out of the box is there is a something called the anti-malware scanning interface. It's going to run. Every time you try to run a PowerShell command, it's going to scan it with antivirus to make sure that you're not doing anything malicious. And in this case, we are doing malicious stuff. So, rightly, it flags us for malicious activity. So, out of the box, this doesn't work. It worked on Mac. It does not work on Windows. So, now, maybe we go a step further and say, okay, how can we bypass AMSI? Well, for those of you that have taken some offensive security training, you might be familiar with the idea of uh, essentially doing and going to this site here. There's a site called AMSI.fail. So I can go here and I can take that payload and I can put it in here and it's going to generate some kind of bypass for this AMSI antivirus. So it will generate one. And let's try that. Let's try to put that in. We'll see if that will help us bypass. This is something that you learn about in the OSEP, the follow-up to OSCP. So a pretty fairly advanced course uh, you learn about this. So let's try it. Paste it in. And we got some kind of error here. Let's try to regenerate. Maybe it didn't copy it correctly. Looks like it did, but let's just try again. So this is one of the things that they teach you in the OSCP and blocked by your antivirus software. And I can keep generating these over and over again, but I can tell you that none of these are going to work. And, and that might be a little disheartening if you've taken OSEP, OSCP, whatever, and you think like, oh, I'm taking an advanced course, like OSEP especially, that's like the follow-up course to OSCP, right? It's supposed to be like the advanced one. Understand that those exercises are still good. I'm not knocking them. It's good for learning. It's good to see like how things used to work and whatever and give you that methodology of this stuff. But don't go into those thinking that it's going to teach you the latest and greatest technologies that are going to work in modern against modern antivirus on Windows. And, and here's the reality. There is no certification that can do that because by the time it's known to the public and made into a certification, it's already burned. It already doesn't work. So, okay, what else can we do about this, right? If we do some more research, we can find this here. There's like this, some, uh, there's several other techniques. Rasta Mouse has this DLL that you can create. That's like a fake AMSI.DLL that you can use to try to bypass this and then have PowerShell use the fake AMSI DLL so you can um, not have it scan and block you with AMSI. Well, I tried that as well. That also does not work. <laughs> and the reason it doesn't work, well, let me show you. I actually downloaded the code and uh, I uh, compiled it in Visual Studio and now I have amz.dll, right? I can upload this here. And it hasn't happened now, but it will happen very soon that antivirus will start screaming and saying, <laughs> you have malware on your computer. You have... Uh, an AMC, uh, AMC malware on your computer uh, because this has been flagged by antivirus. This, they've already generated a signature because here's the thing, right? If, this, if these techniques to bypass this stuff is publicly available, well, guess who else it's available to? It's available to the defense and the defense, some of these guys, literally, it is their job to write detections for these attacks, for these bypasses. So they've already done that. Right, they're already they've already done the heavy lifting there. Here's basically the technique, though. If we go and we we pull up like a PowerShell, 
.exe. Up oh, here we go. Uh, found threats. As soon as I ran PowerShell, it uh, it was able to see that hey, it's trying to use the fake AMZ, right? So you see this here, AMZ tamper. So this isn't going to work, and in a, a few minutes, it's going to delete this from my disk entirely. So how do we get around this? Well, we're basically going to have to. Um, we would have to basically modify this DLL here to try and bypass static detection, heuristic detection, whatever it's being flagged on. So we would have to modify this or we just find another tool, another technique altogether. So this is a cat and mouse game. And honestly, I can't tell you what I use because you guys will burn it. It will be burned if I release it on here. But just know that these out of the box methods, even they don't work, even the ones that are taught to you on these more advanced certs. OK, so we got that out of the way. This is a lot harder. Basically, we would have to shut down a bunch. Of, we would either have to do a bunch of crazy antivirus bypass stuff to get this payload to work or I'll show you like if we go in and sure, if we shut down antivirus, it will work, <laughs> but that will turn off AMC. It will turn off Windows Defender. It will be turning off multiple layers of protection. All right. So if I do this, for example, and now I rerun this payload just to show you that it, it does in fact work, we'll come here. And now we see, we get the connection back. We'll run a command like uh, who am I or something like that and we see the output come back. So we, we do have code execution now. So that goes to show you just how many more hoops you have to jump through to get this to work on a Windows system. Is Mac more secure? I don't know, let's keep going here because there is more that I wanna show you guys as well. Now, if you guys are familiar with what's been in the news a lot in recent years is ransomware, right? And what is one of the most popular attacks as well that we see along with that is usually installing some kind of crypto miner. The most popular crypto miner to install on a system is XM rig, which is basically, uh, it, it mines Monero, the Monero cryptocurrency. And so if we download this, cause anyone can mine currency like legitimately, right? But unfortunately it's also used a lot by attackers. So we can go to the Monero site and download XM rig. So let's try to do that and have that on both systems. So we're gonna jump back over to our Mac PC. And I am going to go to HTTPS XMRig.com slash download. And we are going to install the Monero Crypto Miner, right? This is Apple Silicon, it's an M2 Mac. So I'm gonna use this one here. Say so understand download and looks like it downloaded no problems so we can go here we see it right here uh if i wanted to i could move this to like my uh my desktop and move this to the desktop and i mean we can extract this as well just to show you hey look here's the executable here xm rig at no point was antivirus ever stopping anything flagging anything screaming at us it all just worked and it will work for the attackers as well, is my point. Uh, let's try this same thing on Windows and see what happens. So I'm going to open up a web browser here. I'm going to use the default Microsoft Edge in this case. Go to xmrig.com slash download. And let's try to do the same thing. All right. We're going to choose Windows in this case and download the zip file. See the same prompt as before. Hit download. And uh oh, it didn't work. We got blocked by a completely different antivirus technology. This one called Microsoft Defender Smart Screen. So already it didn't work. <laughs> Let's see like what our options are here. Let's say we got past that and report this file as safe and try to download it. And let's go from there. And we have to explain to Microsoft why, uh, why, we, why we're doing this. First of all, we got to enter CAPTCHA. <laughs> so we can't do this through any automation as the attacker. Unless we bypass the CAPTCHA, of course. Um, I, I guess we don't have to give feedback, I guess, as well. We could probably just skip that. But let's see, did it even download? Uh, it looks like it didn't. Maybe we try it again. And keep in mind, this is getting blocked by smart screen. Uh, we could hit keep, yeah. Keep anyway, <laughs> there we go. And keep in mind, we have um, Defender disabled at the moment. We could probably re-enable that to see what happens, right? That's the whole point of this. Let's see if the regular Windows Defender flags on this or not. I'm not sure if it will. 
But e even still, we've already been uh, burned by a defender smart screen in this case. Just to show you, we'd have to go through hoops. And not to say you can't bypass this stuff, but you have to go the extra step of bypassing it. Boom, found threats. <laughs> what did it block? It blocked uh, XM rig, right? Let's take a look. And there you go, coin miner. <laughs> so yeah, there's so many things you have to bypass here. There's so many ways that the antivirus will stop you. So what do you guys think? Is Mac really more secure than Windows? Well, in reality, OS security is a super complex topic and there are many more factors out there to consider than we could possibly cover in a 15 minute video. But my aim of this is to further educate you on this topic so that you can become more aware of the security side of things. And definitely as you're learning this stuff, you want to mentor, you want to position yourself to get in this field with the changing climate and landscape of being less welcoming to newcomers and beginners. So definitely send me a DM to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber and looking forward to hearing from you soon.